If you exclude the Saturn V tests in the 1960s, I think no test series has been under so much scrutiny as the SpaceX Starship program. No fewer than four cameras, to my knowledge, and probably more than that, were trained on this static fire as it happened, from Rocket Future, NASA Spaceflight, Lab Padre, and others. Just an amazing amount of coverage together with spectacular visuals of this event. But can we learn anything from it? Well, fortunately, thanks to our friends at What About It, we got a very good overview of Massey's test facility and an idea of just how extensive the damage might have been. And also because several cameras together with multiple microphones were pointed at the anomaly, I think we can learn a little bit from that as well. And even though Though most of the news is good as far as I'm concerned, it's still going to be a while before this test facility is operational again. Good afternoon, space flight enthusiasts, and welcome to another Angry Bulletin. This one is not going to be as long as some of my videos, simply because we're talking about a topic that we don't have a whole lot of information about in regards to exactly what damage was done to the Massey's test facility for Starship, and also why did the explosion take place. But still, there are some obvious details about this event that will help us understand exactly how serious all of this event actually was and how damaging it might have been. Fortunately, the vast majority of this explosion, if that's what you want to call it, was more of a conflagration than a blast. Now, I want to be clear. Some people are saying that there was no shock wave at all. That's not true. And you're going to see that here in just a moment, that even people over 10 kilometers away felt the shock wave. But all that having been said, it was more of a series of explosions together with a conflagration. And that is something that sets all of this apart from other explosions that one might see. When rockets go up in an anomaly of some kind, usually it involves their fuel burning rather than exploding. If there's an explosion, it's a combination of the gases mixing with the air that can create this explosive mixture, which means the vast majority of the fuel was involved in a burning process rather than an explosive process. And also, fortunately, since this was a static fire, there wasn't a whole lot of fuel involved in the experiment anyway. All that being the case, though, there was an extensive amount of damage around the test stand and it's doubtlessly going to take some time to get this facility up and running again. Okay, now I've got this load way down. According to SpaceX, there was a failure in the COPV, composite overwrapped pressure vessel, which contains liquid nitrogen in the nose cone. You see that flying away to the left there? That is that COPV having failed. And that, in my opinion, created a breach and probably a momentary spark that ignited some, but not all, of the fuel tanks. And then as the remaining remainder of the fuel tanks plummeted towards the ground, we have a secondary explosion that was far more violent because we have an inrush of air mixing with the fuel at that point, leading to a more violent explosion than the first. But again, for the most part, this is a conflagration event, not an explosive event. A lot of burning, but not a whole lot of shock wave or explosive force. But it wasn't completely accurate. Absent. And the best way to illustrate this is to have a look at my friend Mars Embassy's footage. This was filmed from South Padre Island, about 12 kilometers away. Might have even been a little bit further than that. So it takes quite some time before the shockwave arrives. But you can see the effect of it here in just a few seconds.
It takes almost 50 seconds for the shock wave to arrive, indicating a distance of maybe around 12 kilometers or so. Again, I'm just kind of ballparking all of this. I'm sure there's some of you out there more clever than I that can figure this out with a much greater degree of precision. But nevertheless, this is a long, long ways away, and yet still the shock wave was strong enough to visibly shake the tripod on the camera. Now, it's been a while since I've said anything like this, but this should give us a strong indication of how bad it could be if a full stack goes up during a test flight when you have large crowds of people much closer than 12 or 13 kilometers. So yeah, something that perhaps SpaceX might want to keep in mind along with people who go to watch these things in the future. But let's go ahead and have a look at the damage once again. What about it sending a drone over Massey's facility? This is how they managed to get this. They provide some incredible coverage, but so too does RGV aerial photography. Now here's the good news. The damage is essentially limited to the area immediately around the test stand. Although some areas may have been damaged by flying debris because pieces of stainless steel ended up all over the place on the canals and rivers surrounding this area. But still overall, the test facility remained largely untouched except for the test stand and the area surrounding it. So let's have a close look at all of this. And as you can see, the buildings around the test stand are somewhat damaged. Some of them, although these tanks over here are scored a bit by carbon, but otherwise largely untouched. But this is the water deluge area of the test facility. So these were not fuel tanks in close proximity to the static fire area, which is is pretty good thinking, in my opinion, a good design decision. And this stuff over here is not part of the test facility. In my opinion, this is debris from the rocket itself. And then all of the fuel lines leading into the test stand, well, those seem to be a complete loss. So all of that is going to have to be rebuilt. And it may be that the test stand itself is a loss as well, although it's difficult to tell for certain because we have to keep in mind that a similar conflagration during an RFA static fire at Saxavord Spaceport, it looked like it completely consumed the launch table, but actually not a whole lot of damage was done. The booster, of course, was a complete loss, but the launch table will be used again this year for hopefully a successful test flight from Saxavord Spaceport as RFA tries to become the first private company to get to orbit from Europe. But it does appear that the vast majority of the conflagration, along with the explosive force, was focused away from most of the important stuff at Massey's test facility. These tanks, for example, contain liquid methane, and it would have been even more devastating if these had gone up in flames, but fortunately, they seem to avoid any sort of significant damage, although this building down here, far more distant than the methane tanks, seems to have suffered rather severely. So in my opinion, SpaceX should be able to repair this facility in a matter of a few months and return it to operational status, although investigations of the explosion, what caused it, and then corrective actions to make sure something like this doesn't happen again, all of those things are going to have to happen before we can start proceeding to another test flight, meaning that we could be looking sometime into the fall or or perhaps even the winter before we have another test flight of Starship, which is bad news for Artemis 3 and everything else that Elon is hoping to do with this ambitious rocket. So I hope that was informative. Once again, there are many things that we don't know about this incident, so a lot of this is speculative. But nevertheless, I think I'm right about at least some of it. So I hope you guys found this helpful. Once again, I want to thank the folks who have contributed towards my objective of reaching Australia. I'm over 52% of the way there now. Thank you so very much. Just on a home stretch now, essentially. If you'd like to support it, once again, all the details in the description. 
You can contribute to my GoFundMe. You can buy a piece of merchandise like this shirt here. Very, very cool. This home and orbital transfer shirt. Or you can join me on Patreon and get access to a wide variety of exclusive videos. Thanks again for watching. And as always, stay angry about space.